This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. In this segment, we're gonna talk about warming up your horse. I'm gonna give you a pre-flight checklist just to run through and make sure that your horse is with you. Remember, to get our horses to focus, we have to get their feet moving. A horse is rhythmically balanced and they need to establish rhythm to truly start processing and thinking. And when I say rhythmically balanced, I mean all four feet are moving in unison. We need the horse to loosen up and start thinking and flowing around here. Most people, when they get on their horse, the first thing they do is they start to back the horse up. That is actually exactly wrong. When you first crawl on a horse, you don't want to back them up because what happens is you'll start getting that horse to be cinchy or bronchy or anything like that. A horse needs to move forward and establish rhythm of the feet and then through redirecting body parts, we'll get our horses to be focused on us. So as I said here, I'm just gonna start right down through. Number one on my list is just to soften my horse and make sure she's with me. And if I bring her around, I'm just lifting straight up on the rein. My legs are off of her. I'm just asking her to bend a little bit here. And when she comes off of that and finds the slack, all four feet are still, I'll release. So I'm just gonna soften her both ways and make sure she's here. If she had left me, I'd stay there until I got it. But she kind of says, all right. And I want to just be able to bend her around. I don't want her nose all the way to my leg. I just want to make sure that when I pull on that bridle, that everything's all right. All right. So number two on our checklist is as, is as I ask her to walk off, I'm going to start redirecting the hip. You will notice that everything I'm doing here at first I'm gonna lift on that left rein, add that left leg and push that hip around. She should move around her front end. Then I'm just gonna walk off. Then I'm gonna to change to the other side. I'm gonna lift on the right rein, right leg. I'm gonna push that hip around until that front end kind of settles down there. And then I'm just gonna release and walk off. And I'm gonna work on getting her to be confident in what I'm asking her to do here. So number three on our list when we keep going is I'm gonna start adding parts into this. So I'll start off just like I did. I'll go left rein, left leg, and I'll push that hip around. But now I'm gonna take my left leg off and I'm gonna add the right leg. And I'm gonna step the shoulders through. And I'll do this from the greenest of horse, like a first or second ride horse, all the way to my very most finished horses. Now I'm gonna go right rein, right leg, push that hip around, disengage the hip, now right leg off and add the left leg and step the shoulders through. You notice these first exercises, I'm just making sure my horse is with me. I'm making sure that he's soft laterally before I ever ask him to flex vertically. The next part of our checklist is gonna be to disengage the hip. All of these just flow together. And now I'm just gonna spread my hands out low and wide and I'm gonna ask my horse to back. If he kind of hangs right there, I'm just gonna kind of move my legs. We have to remember that our horses are rhythmically balanced. And with our horses being rhythmically balanced, if we can kind of get a nice rhythm on their side, they can't help themselves but to start moving them feet at that rhythm. The one problem with that is if you start pulling more with your reins. We always have to remember our reins are a guide. So now I'm gonna go right rein, right leg. I'm gonna push that hip around till it's flowing nice. And then I'm gonna spread those hands out low and wide and ask my horse to back. So for me, these exercises, they may take, you know, five minutes. They may take two minutes or they may take 30 minutes. It depends on where our horse is that day. And it doesn't matter where we start with a horse. It only matters where we finish with the horse. That's the most important thing to always remember. They do not start in the same spot every day. It's up to us to help our horses to focus and come to us. It's not their responsibility to focus and come to us. It's up to us to help our horses through their problems. This week on Factor Fiction, we're gonna address green horses and green riders. The old wives' tale is, to buy a green horse and let a rider learn how to ride on that horse. The truth of the matter is, over the years I've seen hundreds of examples where this absolutely does not work. To me, that is like 
your 16 year old kid getting his driver's license and going out and buying a Dodge Viper. This is one of the most absurd things I've ever heard. I'm not saying that this does not work occasionally. It will work if the horse has the right disposition and the rider has a little bit of experience. But for the most part, I have seen this end disastrously over the years. I've seen more riders quit riding over this combination. The best advice I could give any person is do not be afraid of that 15 to 25 year old horse that has life experience. Number one, life experience makes up for disposition a lot of times. A good broke horse will help teach your kid how to ride. A green horse will help teach your kid how to doubt themselves. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard.